Katha Upanishad Translated by Max Muller First Adhyaya First Valli Vagasravasa, desirous of heavenly rewards, surrendered at the sacrifice all that he possessed. He had a son of the name of Nachiketas. When the promised presents were being given to the priests, faith entered into the heart of Najiketas, who was still a boy, and he thought, Unblessed, surely, are the worlds to which a man goes by giving, as his promised present at a sacrifice, cows which have drunk water, eaten hay, given their milk, and are barren. He, knowing that his father had promised to give up all that he possessed, and therefore his son also, said to his father, Dear father, to whom wilt thou give me? He said it a second and a third time. Then the father replied angrily, I shall give thee unto death. The father, having once said so, though in haste, had to be true to his word and to sacrifice his son. The son said, I go as the first at the head of many who have still to die. I go in the midst of many who are now dying. What will be the work of Yama, the ruler of the departed, which today he has to do unto me? Look back how it was with those who came before. Look forward how it will be with those who come hereafter. A mortal ripens like corn. Like corn he springs up again. Nachiketas enters into the abode of Yama Vaivasvata, and there is no one to receive him. Thereupon, one of the attendants of Yama is supposed to say, Fire enters into the house when a Brahmana enters as a guest. That fire is quenched by this peace offering. Bring water, O Vaivasvata. A Brahmana that dwells in the house of a foolish man, without receiving food to eat, destroys his hopes and expectations, his possessions, his righteousness, his sacred and good deeds, and all his sons and cattle. Yama, returning to his house after an absence of three nights, during which time Najiketas had received no hospitality from him, says, O Brahmana, as thou, a venerable guest, hast dwelt in my house, three nights without eating. Therefore, choose now three boons. Hail to thee, and welfare to me. Nachiketas said, O death, as the first of the three boons, I choose that Gautama, my father, be pacified, kind, and free from anger towards me and that he may know me and greet me when I shall have been dismissed by thee. Yama said, Through my favour, Adalaki Aruni thy father will know thee, and be again towards thee as he was before. He shall sleep peacefully through the night, and free from anger, after having seen thee freed from the mouth of death. Nachiketa said, In the heaven world there is no fear. Thou art not there, O death, and no one is afraid on account of old age, leaving behind both hunger and thirst, and out of the reach of sorrow all rejoice in the world of heaven. Thou knowest, O death, the fire sacrifice which leads us to heaven. Tell it to me, for I am full of faith. Those who live in the heaven world reach immortality. This I ask as my second 
boon. Yama said, I tell it thee, learn it from me. And when thou understandest that fire sacrifice, which leads to heaven, know, O Nachiketas, that it is the attainment of the endless worlds and their firm support hidden in darkness. Yama then told him that fire sacrifice, the beginning of all the worlds, and what bricks are required for the altar, and how many, and how they are to be placed. And Nachiketas repeated all as it had been told to him. Then Mrithyu, being pleased with him, said again, the generous being satisfied said to him i give thee now another boon that fire sacrifice shall be named after thee take also this many-coloured chain he who has three times performed this nachiketha rite and has been united with the three father mother and teacher and has performed the three duties, study, sacrifice, almsgiving, overcomes birth and death. When he has learnt and understood this fire, which knows, or makes us know, all that is born of Brahman, which is venerable and divine, then he obtains everlasting peace. He who knows the three Nachiketha fires, and knowing the three, piles up the Nachiketha sacrifice, he, having first thrown off the chains of death, rejoices in the world of heaven beyond the reach of grief. This, O Nachiketas, is thy fire, which leads to heaven, and which thou hast chosen as thy second boon that fire all men will proclaim choose now o nachiketas thy third boon nachiketas said there is that doubt when a man is dead some saying he is others he is not this i should like to know taught by thee this is the third of my boons. Death said, On this point, even the gods have doubted formerly. It is not easy to understand. That subject is subtle. Choose another boon. O Nachiketas, do not press me, and let me off that boon. Nachiketas said, On this point, even the gods have doubted indeed, and thou, death, hast declared it to be not easy to understand, and another teacher, like thee, is not to be found. Surely no other boon is like unto this. Death said, Choose sons and grandsons who shall live a hundred years, herds of cattle, elephants, gold, and houses. Choose the wide abode of the earth, and live thyself as many harvests as thou desirest. If you can think of any boon equal to that, choose wealth and long life. Be king, Nachiketas, on the wide earth. I make thee the enjoyer of all desires. Whatever desires are difficult to attain among mortals, ask for them according to thy wish. These fair maidens, with their chariots and musical instruments, such are indeed not to be obtained by men. Be waited on by them, whom I give to thee, but do not ask me about dying. Nachiketas said, These things last till tomorrow, O death, for they wear out this vigour of all the senses. Even the whole of life is short. Keep thou thy horses, keep dance and song for thyself. No man can be made happy by wealth. 
Shall we possess wealth when we see Thee? Shall we live as long as Thou rulest? Only that boon which I have chosen is to be chosen by me. What mortal, slowly decaying here below, and knowing, after having approached them, the freedom from decay enjoyed by the immortals, would delight in a long life, after he has pondered on the pleasures which arise from beauty and love? No, that on which there is this doubt, O death, tell us, what there is in that great hereinafter. Nachiketas does not choose another boon, but that which enters into the hidden world. End of Vali 1 Second Valley of Katha Upanishad Translated by Max Muller Death said, The good is one thing, the pleasant another. These two, having different objects, chain a man. It is well with him who clings to the good. He who chooses the pleasant misses his end. The good and the pleasant approach man. The wise goes round about them and distinguishes them. Yeah, the wise prefers the good to the pleasant, but the fool chooses the pleasant through greed and avarice. Thou, O Nachiketas, after pondering all pleasures that are or seem delightful, hast dismissed them all. Thou hast not gone into the road that leadeth to wealth, in which many men perish. Wide apart, and leading to different points, are these two, ignorance, and what is known as wisdom. I believe Nachiketas to be one who desires knowledge, for even many pleasures did not tear thee away. Fools dwelling in darkness, wise in their own conceit and puffed up with vain knowledge go round and round staggering to and fro like blind men led by the blind the hereafter never rises before the eyes of the careless child deluded by the delusion of wealth this is the world he thinks there is no other thus he falls again and again under my sway. He, the self, of whom many are not even able to hear, whom many, even when they hear of him, do not comprehend. Wonderful is a man when found who is able to teach him, the self. Wonderful is he who comprehends him when taught by an able teacher. That self, when taught by an inferior man, is not easy to be known, even though often thought upon, unless it be taught by another, there is no way to it, for it is inconceivably smaller than what is small. That doctrine is not to be obtained by argument, but when it is declared by another, then, O oh dearest, it is easy to understand. Thou hast obtained it now. Thou art truly a man of true resolve. May we have always an inquirer like thee. Nachiketa said, I know that what is called a treasure is transient, for that eternal is not obtained by things which are not eternal. Hence, the Nachiketa fire sacrifice has been laid by me first, then by means of transient things, I have obtained what is not transient, the teaching of Yama. Yama said, Though thou hadst seen the fulfillment of all desires, the foundation of the world, the endless rewards of good deeds, the shore where there is no fear, that which is magnified by praise, the wide abode, the rest Yet being wise, thou hast with firm resolve dismissed it all. 
the wise who by means of meditation on his self recognizes the ancient who is difficult to be seen who has entered into the dark who is hidden in the cave who dwells in the abyss as god he indeed leaves joy and sorrow far behind a mortal who has heard this and embraced it who has separated from it all qualities and has thus reached the subtle being rejoices because he has obtained what is a cause for rejoicing the house of brahman is open i believe o najiketas najiketas said that which thou seest as neither this nor that as neither effect nor cause as neither past nor future tell me that yama said that word or place which all the vedas record which all penances proclaim which men desire when they live as religious students that word i tell thee briefly it is o that imperishable syllable means brahman that syllable means the highest brahman he who knows that syllable whatever he desires is his this is the best support this is the highest support he who knows that support is magnified in the world of brahma the knowing self is not born it dies not it sprang from nothing nothing sprang from it the ancient is unborn eternal everlasting he is not killed though the body is killed if the killer thinks that he kills if the killed thinks that he is killed they do not understand for this one does not kill nor is that one killed the self smaller than small greater than great is hidden in the heart of that creature a man who is free from desires and free from grief sees the majesty of the self by the grace of the creator though sitting still he walks far though lying down he goes everywhere who save myself is able to know that god who rejoices and rejoices not the wise who knows the self as bodiless within the bodies as unchanging among changing things as great and omnipresent does never grieve that self cannot be gained by the veda nor by understanding nor by much learning he who whom the self chooses by him the self can be gained the self chooses him his body as his own but he who has not first turned away from his wickedness who is not tranquil and subdued or whose mind is not at rest he can never obtain the self even by knowledge who then knows where he is he to whom the brahmans and kshatriyas are as it were but food and death itself a condiment end of second valley third valley of katha upanishad translated by max mulla there are the two drinking their reward in the world of their own works entered into the cave of the heart dwelling on the highest summit the ether in the heart those who know brahman call them shade and light likewise those householders who perform the trinachiketa sacrifice may we be able to master that nachiketa right which is a bridge for sacrifices also that which is the highest 
imperishable brahman for those who wish to cross over to the fearless shore know the self to be sitting in the chariot the body to be the chariot the intellect buddhi the charioteer and the mind the reins the senses they call the horses the objects of the senses their roads when he the highest self is in union with the body the senses and the mind then wise people call him the enjoyer he who has no understanding and whose mind the reins is never firmly held his senses horses are unmanageable like vicious horses of a charioteer but he who has understanding and whose mind is always firmly held his senses are under control like good horses of a charioteer he who has no understanding who is unmindful and always impure never reaches that place but enters into the round of births but he who has understanding who is mindful and always pure reaches indeed that place from whence he is not born again but he who has understanding for his charioteer and who holds the reins of the mind he reaches the end of his journey and that is the highest place of vishnu beyond the senses there are the objects beyond the objects there is the mind beyond the mind there is the intellect the great self is beyond the intellect beyond the great there is the undeveloped beyond the undeveloped there is the person purusha beyond the person there is nothing this is the goal the highest road that self is hidden in all beings and does not shine forth but it is seen by subtle seers through the sharp and subtle intellect a wise man should keep down speech and mind he should keep them within the self which is knowledge he should keep knowledge within the self which is the great and he should keep that the great within the self which is the quiet rise awake having obtained your boons understand them the sharp edge of a razor is difficult to pass over thus the wise say the path to the self is hard he who has perceived that which is without sound without touch without form without decay without taste eternal without smell without beginning without end beyond the great and unchangeable is freed from the jaws of death a wise man who has repeated or heard the ancient story of nagaketha told by death is magnified in the world of brahman and he who repeats this greatest mystery in an assembly of brahmans or full of devotion of the time of the shraddha sacrifice obtains thereby infinite rewards end of the third valli second adhyaya fourth valli of katha upanishad translated by max muller death said the self existent pierced the openings of the senses so that they turn forward therefore man looks forward not backward into himself some wise man however with his eyes closed and wishing for immortality saw the self behind 
children follow after outward pleasures and fall into the snare of widespread death wise men only knowing the nature of what is immortal do not look for anything stable here among things unstable that by which we know form taste smell sounds and loving touches by that also we know what exists besides this is that which thou hast asked for the wise when he knows that that by which he perceives all objects in sleep or in waking is the great omnipresent self grieves no more he who knows this living soul which eats honey perceives objects as being the self always near the lord of the past and the future henceforward fears no more this is that he who knows him who was born first from the brooding heat for he was born before the water who entering into the heart abides therein and was perceived from the elements this is that he who knows aditi also who is one with all deities who arises with prana breath or hiranyagarbha who entering into the heart abides therein and was born from the elements this is that there is agni fire the all seeing hidden in the two fire sticks well guarded like a child in the womb by the mother day after day to be adorned by men when they awake and bring oblations this is that and that whence the sun rises and whither it goes to set there all the devas are contained and no one goes beyond this is that what is here visible in the world the same is there invisible in brahman and what is there the same is here he who sees any difference here between brahman and the world goes from death to death even by the mind this brahman is to be obtained and then there is no difference whatsoever he goes from death to death who sees any difference here the person purusha of the size of a thumb stands in the middle of the self body as lord of the past and the future and hence forward fears no more this is that that person of the size of a thumb is like a light without smoke lord of the past and the future he is the same today and tomorrow this is that as rain water that has fallen on a mountain ridge runs down the rocks on all sides thus does he who sees a difference between qualities run after them on all sides as pure water poured into pure water remains the same thus o gautama is the self of a thinker who knows end of vali 4 fifth vali of katha upanishad translated by max muller there is a town with 11 gates belonging to the unborn brahman whose thoughts are never crooked he who approaches it grieves no more and liberated from all bonds of ignorance becomes free this is that he brahman is the swan sun dwelling in the bright heaven he is the vasu air dwelling in the sky he is the sacrificer fire dwelling on the hearth he is the guest soma dwelling in the sacrificial jar he dwells in men in gods vara in the sacrifice rita in heaven 
he is born in the water on earth in the sacrifice ritha on the mountains he is the true and the great he brahman it is who sends up the breath prana and who throws back the breath apana all the devas senses worship him the adorable or the dwarf who sits in the center when that incorporated brahman who dwells in the body is torn away and freed from the body what remains then this is that no mortal lives by the breath that goes up and by the breath that goes down we live by another in whom these two repose well then o gautama i shall tell thee this mystery the old brahman and what happens to the self after reaching death some enter the womb in order to have a body as organic beings others go into inorganic matter according to their work and according to their knowledge he the highest person who is awake in us while we are asleep shaping one lovely sight after another that indeed is the bright that is brahman that alone is called the immortal all worlds are contained in it and no one goes beyond this is that as the one fire after it has entered the world though one becomes different according to whatever it burns thus the one self within all things becomes different according to whatever it enters and exists also without as the one air after it has entered the world though one becomes different according to whatever it enters thus the one self within all things becomes different according to whatever it enters and exists also without as the sun the eye of the whole world is not contaminated by the external impurities seen by the eyes thus the one self within all things is never contaminated by the misery of the world being himself without there is one ruler the self within all things who makes the one form manifold the wise who perceive him within their self to them belongs eternal happiness not to others there is one eternal thinker thinking non eternal thoughts who though one fulfills the desires of many the wise who perceive him within their self to them belongs eternal peace not to others they perceive that highest indescribable pleasure saying this is that how then can i understand it has it its own light or does it reflect light the sun does not shine there nor the moon and the stars nor these lightnings and much less this fire when he shines everything shines after him by his light all this is lighted end of fifth valley sixth valley of katha upanishad translated by max muller there is that ancient tree whose roots grow upward and whose branches grow downward that indeed is called the bright that is called brahman that alone is called the immortal all worlds are contained in it and no one goes beyond this is that whatever there is the whole world when gone forth from the brahman trembles in its breath that brahman is a great terror 
like a drawn sword those who know it become immortal from terror of brahman fire burns from terror the sun burns from terror indra and vayu and death as the fifth run away if a man could not understand it before the falling asunder of his body then he has to take body again in the worlds of creation as in a mirror so brahman may be seen clearly here in this body as in a dream in the world of the fathers as in the water he is seen about in the world of the gandharvas as in light and shade in the world of brahma having understood that the senses are distinct from the atman and that their rising and setting their waking and sleeping belongs to them in their distinct existence and not to the atman a wise man grieves no more beyond the senses is the mind beyond the mind is the highest created being higher than that being is the great self higher than the great the highest undeveloped beyond the undeveloped is the person the all pervading and entirely imperceptible every creature that knows him is liberated and obtains immortality his form is not to be seen no one beholds him with the eye he is imagined by the heart by wisdom by the mind those who know this are immortal when the five instruments of knowledge stand still together with the mind and when the intellect does not move that is called the highest state this the firm holding back of the senses is what is called yoga he must be free from thoughtlessness then for yoga comes and goes he the self cannot be reached by speech by mind or by the eye how can it be apprehended except by him who says he is by the words he is is he to be apprehended and by admitting the reality of both the invisible brahman and the visible world as coming from brahman when he has apprehended by the words he is then his reality reveals itself when all desires that dwell in his heart cease then the mortal becomes immortal and obtains brahman when all the ties of the heart are severed here on earth then the mortal becomes immortal here ends the teaching there are a hundred and one arteries of the heart one of them penetrates the crown of the head moving upwards by it a man at his death reaches the immortal the other arteries serve for departing in different directions the person not larger than a thumb the inner self is always settled in the heart of men let a man draw that self forth from his body with steadiness as one draws the pith from the reed let him know that self as the bright as the immortal yes as the bright as the immortal having received this knowledge taught by death and the whole rule of yoga meditation nachiketa becomes free from passion 
and death and obtained brahman thus it will be with another also who knows thus what relates to the self may he protect us both may he enjoy us both may we acquire strength together may our knowledge become bright may we never quarrel om peace 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 hari o end of sixth vale end of katha upanishad translated by max muller